what is going on everybody welcome back to the channel uh decided i was going to take a moment to talk about some things uh mainly because i've been talking to a lot of people about what they should do with their vehicle and this is gonna be geared towards a lot of the mopar community because that's kind of what i follow that's what i've been doing this whole time but a lot of it's applicable to all other makes and models of things um with that said i am guilty of nearly everything I'm talking about in this video. I know it says reasons why not to mod your vehicle and a lot of it's because I have been through it myself and I experienced it myself or I have seen it happen to people close to me and have talked about it. So it's not that I'm just talking out my butt here. It's through experience itself. Uh, let me double check something real quick. All right, we're good. Um, so let's get into this. Um, reasons why you shouldn't mod your vehicle and how does this all start you know how it starts it starts with the cold air intake everyone wants one more or less because they want to make their engine sound a little bit better they want to do a mod hear gains of better gas mileage and a little bit more horsepower who wouldn't want that for just a couple hundred extra bucks sounds great doesn't it now there's a whole community out there is talking about cold air intakes don't bring in cold air they bring in hot air all this other stuff and it hurts performance more than anything yada 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 which to an extent is probably true but that's how it all starts you get a cold air intake and you like it and that's what happened with me i got a can in cold air intake i threw it on the jeep sounded great and i wanted a little bit more so let's let's talk about my slippery slope and how this all kind of happened with me um I got the cold air intake and then I was looking online before it was even popular and everybody started talking about it for the 5.7 Hemi guys let's just talk about the Hemis um, I put the 6.4 liter intake manifold on it I was doing this back in 2018 I was searching forms of people doing this back in like 2012 uh, and I went ahead and I did that so with these little performance gains that I got, I was like, all right, I'm a little bit faster. I sound a little bit meaner. Let's take it to the track. And that's where it really bit me. I got that bug. I got that, that racing bug. Because I went to the track and I met somebody who had a Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT. We raced. I got spanked. And I was like, dang, I want to go faster. I want to sound meaner. What can I do? And it's probably that exact same day I left the track. I got home and I started looking at all these other performance mods that I could put on the vehicle. So what's next after you do air well you gotta do exhaust so i started looking at exhaust systems and that's where things start getting more and more expensive so the first the first thing on my checklist that i have here is why not to mod it's cost and money now the cold air intake and the intake manifold ran me about six seven hundred dollars intake manifold was about 300 bucks off ebay it was used the intake cold air intake was like 350 from k&n um and then I had to do the wiring for the intake manifold. So when it was all said and done, I probably dropped around 800, maybe coming close to $900, just for all that air. And at first it doesn't seem all that bad. I was getting better gas mileage and the engine sounded me are great. Well, things get expensive fast. So like I said, I started looking at exhaust. And if you're like me, you want the best bang for your buck, but you want quality parts. So. When it comes to me and the Jeep Grand Cherokee, there's not a lot of options of manufacturers out there that were making exhaust systems for this. I had Cooks and American Racing Headers. I've kind of heard of Cooks before, not American Racing Headers, so I was like, whatever, I'll go with American Racing Headers. Show them some love. Um, I bit the bullet on that. If you've ever seen any of my other videos, how I feel about that, another story. But that was like $1,700, $1,800 after tax. And it bolted up to my factory exhaust system, like the catback portion but the problem i ran to next was i check engine light for long tube headers because the way the sensors read your airflow coming out of the engine it, it's off it throws a check engine light you can't make it go away unless you get a vehicle tune well i had already been looking at camshafts at the same time i was looking at uh exhaust parts so i knew i had to get that fixed but i had to finish out the rest of what i was doing let's get to the cam in a minute so I went on YouTube, like everybody else might do, look up their vehicle with exhaust modifications and try and figure out what that person did to make the vehicle sound like that. And I found a video. So I ended up buying some Cook's bullet mufflers, an X-pipe, and some dual tips for looks. 
and I took it to my local exhaust shop. Guy put it together for 350 bucks plus the parts that I brought. I was probably all about 800 bucks in on my cat back exhaust system, which is actually fairly cheap compared to a lot of things that are available out there. Um, so I thought all said and done, it looked great, but I was always looking at this check engine light that I could not make go away. So I knew I had to get a tune. I was like, all right, well, if I'm gonna do all this, I might as well try and get the most out of it that I can. And then when it comes to you, Hemi guys, you know about the lifter issues. And I was like, well, maybe I can avoid this lifter issue if I upgrade. So I did all this research online. And I was like, you know what? Like I said, the best bang for the buck, I heard a lot about the six point, well, not heard, I read about a lot of good news on the 6.4 intake swapped into the 5.7 Hemi. And I decided I was gonna keep the MDS too because I didn't have an, a lifter issue failure. And then I was doing more research and I was like, well, Chrysler updated all the lifters in like 2016 or something like that. So I made sure I went and I got new lifters, all the ones that are on back order right now. So then I did my cam swap with new lifters, new push rods, new hardware across the board. Nearly nothing was used. I did a new oil pump. So I had all these brand new parts on my vehicle and then it was time to go get a tune. So where do I go for a tune? And you gotta look at your tuners. So that's what I did. This is on the list, tuners. Cost of money was the first thing and it gets expensive quick and I'll, I'll, I'll double back to that. So I went to a shop where I'm at that's reputable, that knows Hemi's, and I went to talk to them. I was like, before I even mention about what I've done to the vehicle, I just wanna see what they can do for me. So I was like, what kind of cam shaft packages do you have? And what does it cost? They showed me and they're like, oh, we got all this, it'll get you about 50, 60 horsepower, something like that, and it's cost you $7,000. I heard that, I was like, oh, okay, that sounds nice. Well, maybe I'll come back. I ain't doing that, $7,000 for a cam swap? You're out of your mind, and for, Less than 100 horsepower gain? No, thank you. I can buy a supercharger for that amount of money, install it myself, and have way more fun than whatever your package could put together. But as I was playing that out in the shop, I was like, I'll go ahead and I'll uh, sign up for a dyno, dyno tune for you guys one day. So I went ahead and I did that with some people that were in my car club that seen me do it that day. Um, and that's my problem I had with tuning. So before you even start modding your vehicle, you need to know go ahead and pick up another topic knowledge you need to know what it is that you want to do to your vehicle and what it is that you want out of it in the end I got a lot of circles around here so when it came time for me to do my dyno tune I had scheduled my appointment I had called the shop and made sure that my appointment was Oh, known of and we're not gonna have any issues. I finished out my 6.4 liter cam swap. I put in all of these brand new parts ready to go. Drove it down to the shop untuned. Showed up, talked to the guy working at the front desk. He was like, the tuner's not here. In my mind, I'm like, why is the guy not here? We had had this scheduled. I'm ready to go, I got money in my pocket. The guy's not here. He's telling me, well, did you talk to the tuner? No, that's your job, you're supposed to tell me this is my personal experience. You're supposed to tell me that he that I got to reschedule. So I was mad. I ended up talking to the owner of the shop, the guy that's supposed to be tuning me. And he was like, oh, I'm sorry. We don't like doing this to our customers. We try and treat everybody like family. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That was on a Monday. Talked to him Tuesday. Talked to him Thursday. Still didn't get set up. So I just got shafted. I got brand new build. I'm running around untuned. And I ran around like that for probably about two months. I was mad because things weren't really running right. I was kind of having to baby everything. And I was like, I can't believe that I did all this work and what should have been an easy thing to get done, I got shafted on. Well, I talked to a guy that was working on his vehicle and he told me about email tuning. And that ended up costing me a lot of money. So that's gonna be another check off on cost of money. What could have been an $850 tune ended up costing me about an extra $2,000. Because one, I had to buy the HP tuners device itself. Then you gotta buy all the credits. And then I had to pay the tuner to tune me. 
and it'll cost me about $2,000. Then I had to set up my wideband. Thankfully, the guy that told me about the email tuning, he was nice enough to hook me up and tap into my exhaust and set the wideband up for me and show me how to do that. So I saved some money on there. Knowing people helps, but it still ended up costing me a lot of money. So if you've been following me on this, I almost got $1,000 into my intake. I got nearly, not nearly, I got over two grand in exhaust. I got another two grand in just parts for the cam swap that I did because I didn't reuse anything. I put in new lifters and push rods and oil pump, camshaft, then you gotta do all your fluids and things like that. That was about another $2,000. So I'm two, four, five, plus the wide band, let's call that a thousand, so I'm at six. Then I have to do email tuning, seven, eight. I'm $8,000 deep on my first build. Let's just say that. So, because one, I had a, a non-reliable tuner, a guy that's out scamming people more or less. I've heard enough about this guy. I'm glad I, I didn't go there. So there's that. It cost a lot of money to get all this done. And at the end of the day, you're still not done because it was a real slippery slope for me. After I had gotten all this work done, I did it all myself and I go back out to the track. I did all this work and I'm on par with the Jeep SRT. And then it sucks because then you get the people, they're asking you, why didn't you just buy an SRT? Well, I bought this used. Even with everything I said that I did, I didn't have all that money at the time I bought the vehicle. That's why I didn't buy an SRT. So then you get, let's go, we're gonna talk about culture. The culture in the car community itself is extremely toxic and it happens everywhere. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and go through some platforms here. It was a long video. So where does it start? You get your three, six guys and what do they wanna be? They, they want, or what do they want to beat? They want to beat the 5.7 guy. So what do they do? They throw on a rip supercharger kit. Okay, you beat the 5.7 guys. And you're about as fast as a scat pack, more or less. Well, what does that 5.7 guy do? Well, he throws in a, he does all the things that I just did. And now he's pretty much faster than you. Maybe we could say that. So that 5.7 guy dumped in a little bit of money to beat that, that souped up V6. Because that 5.7 guy wants to beat that 6.4 guy. Well, I just told you I did all this work and I was practically on par with the 6.4 guy. But let's give credit where credit's due. Those 6.4s are no slouch. They're basically 500 horsepower vehicles from the factory. And just like everybody else, that 6.4 owner, they're doing mods to their vehicle too. So while that 5.7 guy is nipping at their heels, 6.4 guy's like, you know what? I'm going to throw an exhaust and a cam, maybe a couple other goodies onto my vehicle. And now they're beating out that 5.7 guy because that 6.4 guy, maybe who he's trying to compete with, they got a little bit more money in their pocket, they bought the higher trim level. They start throwing on superchargers or turbos or even nitrous. They're gunning for the Hellcat guys. And yeah, okay, well, they're gunning out the Hellcat guys here and there. What does that Hellcat guy do? A pulley and a tune, some E85. Sorry, 6.4 guy, you don't stand a chance anymore. So when it comes to the culture of wanting to be better it's like steps and you can't really beat the next guy because everyone's doing something else to get ahead of the curb. So then you gotta ask yourself, when does it all end? Now that Hellcat guy, I know plenty of Hellcat people and I've talked to them and they say the same thing. Just talk to one, the guy that I picked up my Hellcat throttle body from, where does it end? And when you go to your tuner and you start thinking about the money, all these little things I've talked about and you're trying to figure out what you wanna do, the knowledge of all of this, there's always going to be somebody faster than you. There's always going to be somebody that has deeper pockets than you. So you need to figure out what it is exactly that you want out of your vehicle and when you want to call it quits. Because when you start pushing the envelope more and more and more, you start running into reliability issues. Been there, done that. Ding, ding, ding. Told you I was guilty of this. So we got down cost of money, the culture and the fame. You got those that love it. You got those that hate it. You want to stand out, be cool, be proud. You're going to keep dumping your money into this thing. It's a slippery slope. You got your tuner, so you're going to make sure you get a good one. Don't get an unreliable one because that can be a pain to do. Uh, when enough is enough. And like I said, there's always somebody faster. Um, let's get into that reliability because that's on my list here. So, like I said, I was guilty of all this. And while... I set up my 6.4 swap 
and I was enjoying it for the time being and I was getting a lot of love here and there. I was like, I need more power. How can I be faster? What's the cheapest way to be fast? What I tell you, I was like eight grand in on my setup already. I don't even like thinking about it. I've never even tallied this up before. But as I think about it, I don't even like thinking about this. I went ahead and I bought nitrous. So what did the nitrous run me? Well, the plate kit itself from nitrous outlet was about 13 grand. Or thir I'm sorry, $1,300. Then I had to buy a bottle heater. Then I had to buy a gauge to monitor my nitrous pressure. And you gotta buy a jacket if you wanna go to the track. You gotta wear uh, like a, a, a flame jacket. And you need a helmet because you start going faster and I need a blow down tube. And then you gotta get tuned for nitrous. And there's all these things that you have to do. And I think after it was all said and done with the nitrous setting up, I was probably like two grand deep and just setting up the nitrous just to be faster. So I'm like 10 grand deep already in this build. And this is going to you Hemi guys. Let's just make this about Hemis. And what is everybody talking about? You can't throw too much boost or nitrous on these five sevens or six fours because your motor will blow up. No crap. I blew my motor up because I was being irresponsible and dumb. I was trying to enjoy the vehicle not thinking about what I was doing and just being reckless. That ha that's how things go bad. So, <laughs> I just told you, I don't even want to think about it. I'm 10 grand deep into this. And I blew my motor up. So, damn, the bank owns this. <laughs> Still paying for the motherfucker. I got to fix it. I got a car note. Don't mod your daily. Don't do it. So, I need a new motor. I don't have a warranty. I blew that away a long time ago. Matter of fact, I didn't even get it when I bought this because I like working on my own stuff. I'm saving money there. But, um, reliability's out the window. Now I got downtime. And we're going to go back to cost. So, when I blew my motor up at the beginning of this year, it was probably around March. It was right before all this coronavirus crap kicked off. There's a damn Audi on the road, had the nitrous going. The vehicle was, I have a taser. I bought a taser, I set the Jeep up to run in real, real drive. But we were at the light, I hit the nitrous, gunned it. Tires burned out. As Soon as I caught traction, the RPM dropped a little bit. It was too much cylinder pressure for the motor. I barely got going, engine blew. Now I gotta buy a motor. Thankfully, I know how to work on this. So I was able to break down the motor myself and assess the damage that I cost, that I, that I caused. The block more or less looked perfectly fine. The cylinder walls were perfectly fine. Don't know how I dodged the bullet that I dodged, but I dodged it. My cylinder heads, I had a couple nicks here and there. I, I kind of just buffed them things. I sanded them, I was like, I'm, and I, I made sure my, my heads were level and surfaced, all that good stuff took the block to a machine shop because my my pistons and my rods are kind of dicked up so now I need a new rotating assembly so from March all the way until about the end of September about six months half the year the Jeep was down I didn't have a vehicle and I was able just just how my life is right now I was able to get to and from work no problems but the vehicle is down. Now, if you, now not a lot of people are not in my shoes, but if you're driving your daily around, you're doing all these mods and you, you, you mess something up, you're SOL. You might need a whole new car. I, that's not even tallied up in my cost. So you're gonna have to go buy a, a 94 Honda Civic to get to A to B because you were dumb and you blew up your motor trying to have fun pushing the envelope of what to do and trying to be cool out here and stuff like that. So I was down for six months. I had to buy a rotating assembly. I had to take my block to a machine shop. So the machine shop, they charged me, what, another $1,600, $1,700 to bore, hone, and put new bearings into the block and clean it. Thank you. Then I had to get the rotating assembly. And that was about, I want to say, maybe three grand or something like that. So now another four grand in. Well, I need a new camshaft. I'm not going to run the same camshaft I did before. I got a new camshaft from Modern Muscle. That was about another 800 bucks. Had to get Hellcat lifters. There's another 500 bucks. What else? I had to end up getting new fuel injectors. That cost me another 300 bucks. I got some demon injectors from a guy I knew. Um, I had to upgrade a fuel pump from way back when. That was another 
250 bucks. I hope somebody's tallying this up because I'm not. Um, then I had to get a new tune. My tuner was um, gracious with me. He was like, thanks for coming back. Give you a discount. 850 bucks for a tune or something like that. Okay, thank you. Um, had to get new valve springs. Had to get a valve spring compressor tune. The springs themselves are like another 600 something bucks. I'm not even thinking about how much this is costing me anymore. And that goes back to cost and the culture and what you want to do with your vehicle and if this is really the life you want to live and things you want to do because you got downtime when things break and everything is extremely expensive and you don't really know the reliability of stuff so talking about me and where I'm at would I do this all over the same way all over again man I don't know on this platform, the Jeep Grand Cherokee, maybe not. I mean, it's cool, it's very unique. Let's give it that. A lot of people love Jeeps and I get a lot of love on the streets. People see me driving around, man, that's cool, that's that's great and all these other things and it's a real surprise to a lot of people. It's been fun doing this, but has it been worth it? What are you doing this for? Are you Are you modding because you like racing? Are you going to the track or are you street racing? That's another thing altogether. One's real dumb to do. Both can be dumb to do. That's another thing I'm not gonna get into. Um, or are you doing all these mods and modifications because like me, you were watching Cletus on YouTube or whoever else, you're watching all these videos and you're like, dang, I want a little fame. I wanna stand out and look good. So I'm gonna start modding my vehicle. I'll do a little bit here, here, here. I'll make a YouTube channel like I did. I'm telling you, I'm guilty. But how much are you enjoying all of this now? Are you enjoying your vehicle? Has it been fun going through all of this? Has it been a strain on your relationship or your family? How much money have you dumped into all of this just to be cool? Let's, let's call it that. I got tens, yeah, maybe $20,000 deep in the mods into this vehicle <laughs> and I got turbos sitting at home I haven't even done those yet but I'm gonna sell the nitrous to try and fund the turbos man this is a big long video this is a huge confession video so here's the last kicker maybe maybe we'll make maybe we'll make this one the last kicker I got a boy in Atlanta Shaq if you're watching this video He's got this charger, this blue and white charger. I know he's dumped buku amounts of money into that thing. As have I with my Jeep, and I haven't even really done anything aesthetically, sort of say. I put a shaker hood scoop on the Jeep. Why? Because I can't kick an idea. That was another two grand. With everything said and done, for all these people that are out here modding, or for those of you who are thinking about modding your vehicle, what happens when you're driving on the road and you get T-boned? Because I can tell you right now, if that were to happen to me, my insurance ain't paying for all the things that I did to this. I'm going to have a totaled vehicle. I got gap insurance. That's great. But all the money that I've dumped into this thing, I'm not going to get back. There's no way. I'm going to have to, if I want to save, I got to hope that the motor survives an impact if something goes bad. Or even if it's, my own fault, like I did because I was playing around in the snow and I dicked up my bumper. That could have been something way worse. I had just rebuilt the entire motor, did something duping, and I risked it all just trying to have fun. And you see it all the time. Guys are out in the street meeting, going to meets and stuff like that, doing nonstop donuts, hit somebody, hit something, then you're out of vehicle. You put all this money into it and now you're screwed because you were trying to look cool in the culture and all that other stuff. Now, it sounds like I'm being real negative and down in all of this saying, you know, don't do it. I know people are gonna do what they're gonna do and they're gonna wanna do it because it's fun, but you gotta think, is it worth it? And is it really something you wanna do? What are your end goals? And then where do you take it from there? Because it's not gonna last forever. I tell myself I'm gonna keep this Jeep forever because I've done so much to it and I know I'm not gonna get my money back on it. It's a very versatile vehicle. I can take it everywhere. But I also kind of have fun doing what I do. But it's a huge risk on all of it. There's a huge risk. Everything, this 
on modding your vehicle, if there's anything, there's a huge risk to all of this. So think about that when you decide if you want to mod your vehicle or not. And for you Mopar guys, there's always somebody faster than you. And there's probably maybe somebody out there that's already done what you've done. Enjoy it while you can. It's all fun and games. But to me, it came down to the cost of money. How long is your vehicle going to be down because you're doing all these mods? There's downtime. Reliability. Everything you're doing to your vehicle, is it going to be worth it? Because I was pushing the envelope already when I did the 6.4 cam swap. Then I threw nitrous on it. And reliability went out the, the window. Blew my motor up. So when is enough enough? Well, I had to replace everything. But now that I got a... a, 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 a a built motor I'm thinking about even doing more but you got to think there's always somebody doing more well I got a motor now that competes with the 6.4 guys there's still Hellcats and there's Trackhawks out there I'm still not gonna be able to compete with a guy that has a Trackhawk yeah I could slap these turbos on this Jeep but I don't have the transmission or the drivetrain that those guys do my motor can take it but my transmission can't I can't afford a transmission right now so is that really something I want to do or I'm gonna have to dial down the power until I can get a new transmission so when is enough enough like I said, there's always somebody faster. You could get into a car crash and then it's all gone. Too bad, so sad. Are you doing it because you want to look good? Is your social media popping off like you hope? Are you doing everything yourself or do you have to go to a tuner or a shop? Do they know what they're doing? And how much, like I said in the beginning, is this all going to cost you? And in the end, are you really enjoying this like you thought you would? I think I am. It does get tiring doing this over and over again, but that's going to be the video on why you shouldn't mod your vehicle. Talking to a lot of you Mopar people, but it applies to almost everybody. So it was a long video. I don't think I've ever made a video this long. So if you like what you see, let's make this short. Like and subscribe, share, and once again, thank you for coming to Mopar.